Okay, I'm Mike Trott. I'm Principal Scientist with Plant and Food Research at the Marlborough Research Centre in Blenheim, New Zealand. Uh, I'm also Adjunct Associate Professor of uh, Plant Science at Lincoln University, Canterbury, New Zealand. I was in Harp, at Harper Adams from 1969 to 1971 um, and I did a National Diploma in Agriculture and thoroughly enjoyed myself as well. On leaving Harper Adams um, I was encouraged by the staff here to go and do a degree at Aberystwyth University. Um, did quite well there in agricultural botany and then went on to do a PhD um, at Letcombe Laboratory in Berkshire, Oxfordshire. Um, in 1978 um, I was offered a position, postdoctoral position in New Zealand. I got married six days before I went to New Zealand, went on honeymoon. I guess I'm still on honeymoon because I've never come back. Um, and have progressed through their um, science and education process um, in New Zealand. I uh, spent 10 years at Lincoln University, three years working for um, one of their major wine companies, gained some really pra good practical experience. And now finally at the research centre where um, I run part of their grape and wine program. Our program basically looks at the sort of environmental factors that drive and control flavour and aroma um, in New Zealand wine, uh, particularly Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, New Zealand has developed an international reputation for Sauvignon Blanc and fine wines um, very, very rapidly. First grapes were planted in Marlborough in 1973. Today, Marlborough is the predominant um, region in New Zealand for grape and wine production, producing something like 60 to 70 percent of the nation's wine, um, and has developed an international reputation. I'm very pleased to say that I've been part of that story. We spent um, a few moments talking about the, the development of the industry, um, how um, Sauvignon Blanc in particular um, arrived on the international scene in the late 1980s, uh, a completely new wine style that the British public in particular um, enjoyed. Um, they were at that time a major market. Um, it's now worth $1.2 billion New Zealand export value, um, the wine industry. So it's our largest horticultural industry by um, a long way, and probably I think it's about six or eight in terms of export value out of New Zealand. Um, the particular presentation that I gave today um, looked at some of the work that we've been doing um, on precision viticulture. One of the things about um, the Wairau Plains, just in the northeast corner of uh, New Zealand, is the soils are predominantly alluvial, so you get quite a lot of variability in soil texture running east-west. Now the rows are predominantly planted north-south, so they run at right angles to that variation. The variation in the texture has a profound influence on the ripening and the flavour and aroma profiles um, of the grapes. So what we've been doing is trying to map the vineyards to understand how this variation affects um, the fruit composition and ultimately the wine style. When you're harvesting it, you take the whole lot together and it blends in um, into a, um, a unique character that is um, Marlborough Sauvignon Blanc. I thoroughly enjoyed my time here. It put my life and career on a direction that uh, at the time I could not have predicted. Um, and um, I have a great affection for Harper Adams. It is quite mind-boggling to come back here after 42 years and see how much it has changed. Um, I mean, you can read about these things on web pages and the like, but to actually come back here and see the physical environment and um, the uh, staff uh, and the commitment, you get feeling good vibes um, from um, the staff that I've been fortunate to meet today. Very similar to what it was like in 1971, um, but um, bigger. It's a lot of fun, um, uh, but one needs to have passion, um, it's hard work, um, I mean there are quite a lot, of, we, when I was at Lincoln we got quite a lot of British students um, coming down to uh, Lincoln University to study grape and wine production. Many of those students um, have come back to the UK, many of them have gone around the world.